being able to test and clean injectors is a good opportunity to take your car diagnostics one step further. Uh, stick around and uh, find out how to make one of these on your own. So what do we need to make this possible? First of all, we need a fuel rail. I went for one with Bosch connectors because that's the most common injectors I encounter. Second, we need a fuel pump, preferably one with a built-in filter, a fuel tank, an extra fuel filter for the petrol that is going back into our fuel tank, and then we need some uh, hoses to fit all this together, uh, and we need some cables, a switch and a fuse holder, a 4-pin relay and a turn signal relay with 3 pins, 4 fuel reservoirs that shows us the amount of fuel and then we need something to power everything with, like a car battery or uh, something similar. An optional something to put everything on. I wanted mine to be easy to carry wherever I go. You can do this as a permanent installation on a wall as well. So let's get some parts and start building. I went to my local salvage yard to find a fuel rail or a fuel pump for my project. I also found some hoses and clamps I found useful. My country Saab is a common brand and the connectors for the injectors suits my needs. You can go with something similar as well that fits your specific needs better. Alright, we have a fuel rail. Let's give it a clean so it's nice and tidy to work with later. I also found a fuel pump with a built-in filter, exactly what we need. Let's head back home, test the fuel pump and start with figuring out the wiring. I've made a simple wiring diagram you can follow. You can use the other colors if you like. Keep in mind that all ground should be preferred to install directly to the negative terminal on the battery. You can check back here anytime if you're unsure. So let's test it. It works! Now we know that our wiring is correct and the final assembly will be so much easier. So let's get to it! I first start with putting a few related parts in a position I feel suitable. I then find out, found out that I needed the fuel rail to stand out a little bit from my tool board. I solved this with some bolts. You can use rubber standoffs as well. I prefer it to be solid mounted. If it's solid mounted, it'll be easier to install and remove injectors without the fuel rail wiggling. This will be terrific! I then started preparing the wiring for later so it'll be easier to just get to it. For fuel reservoirs I chose these I found in the garden section at my local store. They're cheap and accurate for our needs and comes with a stand we'll modify for our project. Alright, now we made some holes for the reservoirs and made some cutting and grinding on the holders. It's time for some sanding and then some paint. Now it really starts to look like something. Let's install that fuel tank. I used some real strong velcro to make it easy to attach and deattach when necessary.
Once the fuel lines is installed it'll look something like this. Keep in mind that the line in is always the one that goes directly to the fuel rail. The small one that goes in parallel is the return line. Make sure to attach your second filter there so we're absolute sure to remove all kinds of particles we don't want in any injectors. Let's make the final installation on the wiring. I wanted my wiring in the back for a nicer look. If you're unsure, just go back and watch the schematics. After that, we're up for a test start. Oh, I almost forgot. For the fuse I used a 10 amp. You don't want a too big one. You always want the fuse to be the weakest part. And it fires right up. And you build it all by yourself. The only thing remaining is to make the wiring nice and tidy. Then we're finished with our project. Thank you for stopping by and if I were to any help, uh, hit that like button. Uh, I'll keep posting similar content to this one, so make sure to subscribe if you're up for more.